The updated 2022 Honda Accord is fairly similar to the one that it refreshed. It's not a bad thing as it's been an attractive looking car and that's the thing with the current Accord, you either love it or hate it. LED headlights are the exact same as the pre-refresh model, this being the Touring. We have full LED headlight setup with LED fog lights. The up front is practically the same, just a small little refresh. It is large and proud up front though with Honda sensing technologies tucked away down in the lower bumper. Aside from that, the overall front end is a mixed bag as a silver trim by the Honda badge is my least favorite part, but it seems like that's about to change when we get the next generation, which I personally think is within the next couple years. The wheels on the Touring are my favorites. Honda usually does pretty good wheel designs and this isn't an exception. We have 19 inch wheels on 235 series tires front and back. If you get other trims, you do get different rim styles and smaller wheel sizes the lower the trim that you go to. Side so the what has that fastback look, which does look pretty nice in my opinion. You have that A7-esque kind of rear end look to it, which some people may like, but it does look pretty nice overall, especially for a mainstream midsize sedan. The rear end has that same LED combination taillight setup with their brake lights and running lights being LEDs, and the reverse and signals are halogens. Continue on the video, I just wanted to say thank you to Honda West of Calgary, Alberta for letting me borrow this Accord. If you're interested in this or any other Honda in the Calgary area, the link to their website is in the description below. Beneath the hood, we have the lower 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It makes 192 horsepower and 192 pound feet of torque. This one is made it to a CVT transmission as front wheel drive. If you get the two liter, you do get a 10 speed transmission, which is really great and fun to drive. The approximate zero to 60 for this is about 6.6 .6 seconds. Get that two liter and it notches it down to about 5.7 roughly. The interior of the Accord Touring is the exact same as the pre-refresh model, which once again, I think is not the worst case because the interior has always been pretty good to start with. There's just some minor areas it's starting to lock in, but overall, definitely usable. Starting out with the door panel, it's the same layout with this fake wood trim and matte finish, which I really think is a great look despite not being real. The buttons and switch gear feel nice and high quality, and we also have decent storage in the door pocket. The steering wheel is a nice, small, thick wheel, the same as before as well. The buttons give a nice tactile feel. The stitching feels great in the hand. And because it's the Touring, we get a heated steering wheel as well, which the lower trims do not have. The display is a 50-50 digital slash analog split. It would have been nice if they upgraded it to a fully digital display now that the Civic Touring has one, but it's still easy to read. It's got good graphics and still usable. The infotainment is also the exact same. I believe it's a seven inch unit. It does have the newer Honda Link UI. It's smooth to use. We do have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay now, which is good. I don't think the previous refreshed versions had that. The backup camera is low resolution, but so is majority of the competitors. So other than that, it's still nice to use. The GPS is okay as well. Could be improved, but I really think that they're gonna do that starting the next generation. We're also in the top trim. We also have a heads up display. It's big enough to do the deed and pretty clear. I'm not sure if you could change the brightness or things like that, but it's a good way to get your information on that windshield of yours. The HVAC controls have always been perfect in this car. No need to change it. And that's exactly what they did. We do have dual zone climate control. We have knobs for the temperature select knobs for the fan speed hashtag save the knobs. You know, guys say it, they light up red and blue depending on what temperature you're selecting. And the fan speed's easy to get to, and this is exactly where your heated seat and cooled seat buttons are as well. Beneath that, we do have a lower cubby at the bottom, reminiscent of older Accords. Mine has it, the previous generation of that has it as well. We do have a couple of USBs in here, and we do have a wireless charger because ours is a top trim, which is also a great thing to have for those extra top-ups. Going down, we do see the shift knob, which is nice to feel in the hand. It's leather wrapped as well. I'm glad it's not a dial or a button. It's, it's traditional, which I personally love. Beneath that, you're gonna have your buttons, your econ mode, sport mode, automatic start stop, your parking brake and brake holds. The material for the center console is definitely very nice as well. The cup holders are nice and spacious. And if you move further down, you have a leather wrapped center armrest. And if you open it up, you have pretty decent storage. It's got little uh, tray for cubbies and it's got a power outlet there as well. So yeah, you're good to go. And even where your knees would rest, you have some nice leather stitched padding over there. It's not too soft, but it helps. The seating is still great with comfortable cushioning. I love how soft these seats feel and you could sit 
and these for long road trips and be good to go and comfortable. They're nicely wrapped in leather. They're stitched as well. The driver's has a 12-way power seat, which I believe is standard now, at least for the new model years. While the passenger gets four-way power because we're in the upper trim, and if you don't have an upper trim, your passenger gets a four-way manual. They're also heated and cooled because it's the Touring, but anything below that is heated only. Okay, time to jump into the rear. I do have my front seat set to where I would drive comfortably. I'm six foot one if you're new. The door panel looks the exact same, which I personally love. Man, this wood trim, even though it's fake, it looks fairly nice in my opinion. Leather wrapped and padded very nicely. This is where your heated seat button will be just because it's the Touring. So three stay, that's nice. The window switches feel nice and plenty of space. Now, jumping back in here, great. You have to lower your head a little bit just so you don't bang it. But even though the seat is pretty fairly far back, I have plenty of leg room, lots of space. My head kind of rubs against the uh, roof just because of the way the slant is in the back, but definitely doable. In the center storage here, you have a couple of vents, USBs as well, which is awesome and nice to have. And the seats feel great. That same kind of pattern with the stitching, the perforations, they feel very nice. Lower this bad boy down very nice and thick kind of storage area cup holders and super comfortable and plush it's a win in my books we have the cargo area there's a little button right beneath the h logo that'll open it up for you or you can use the interior lockout or the exterior let me move this stuff now opening it up you have fairly generous amounts of space about 16 cubic feet of storage, just a little over 16 cubic feet, which is plenty. You can always fold down those seats, as you can see, 40, 60 split, and you'll have even more. It's always been a nice family sedan with plenty of space to carry a large cart of groceries. All right, here we are. Time to drive the 1.5T Accord Touring. I've never driven the 1.5. I've driven the 2 Sport, which is what I wanted to get, but unfortunately I couldn't. But as always, we're going to start off with the launch test. It's in sport mode. It's got a CVT, so it's going to be nothing special, but we're just gonna see what this under 200 horsepower Accord sedan can do. Is everybody ready? Wheel spin, aggressive pull. Wow, see that wasn't too bad, wasn't too bad. It's definitely gonna do what you need it to do in terms of getting around town. If you don't need extra power, you know, you can definitely go without it. It's, it's, it's enough to get you around town merging lanes, but it's not gonna have you giggling like the two liter would, in my opinion, having driven that one as well. It's still great to use in the city though. I'm gonna turn off that sport mode now. And overall driving, since I've been driving it since yesterday, what I definitely noticed was the ride quality is pretty darn good. It's super quiet. It's nice to drive. It's just, you don't hear that much outdoor noise coming in. Now, what I did hear from other journalists is that it does have a lot of road noise coming in on lower trims, so maybe they're less insulated as the Touring, so maybe that's a, a considering factor to you. But the blind spots are super, super uh, minimal. The A pillars are super thin, so you can see pretty clearly. Um, the side mirrors, all these shaped, uh, they could have been a little bit, I think, uh, you know, more at the top, just so you can see a little bit more. But plenty of great visibility. The windows are nice and wide. The only issue would be the blind spot, which is your usual suspect, the right rear if I turn around. But even though it's a little bit more tough than the front, obviously, they have to have those pillars more thick in case of rollovers. And with the window in the corner as well, it helps quite a bit letting light in as well on top of letting you see more. Other than that though, fuel economy is excellent. It does very, very well in the city and even on the highway. Um, and, and aside from that, you know, it's a great family sedan. The Accord has always been a great family sedan. It can carry lots of people and decent amount of space as well for groceries or any other cargo you might have. And I'll leave it at that because the Accord really doesn't need anything else. They've stayed to tradition of what Accords have been known to be and they continue being that. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.